Good morning, everyone. Today we are examining some lessons from Jeremiah chapter 10. Now, as we talked about yesterday, Jeremiah chapter 10 is actually the end of what has been a uh, about a four-chapter message by Jeremiah. And so you don't necessarily have the beginning uh, statements or things of that nature that you might be used to seeing in such a message. It jumps straight into what's being discussed. And so as you get into chapter 10, and he's formulating some of these final arguments for this particular message, the discussion of this chapter turns to the origins of idolatry. And one of the things that he spends the first half of the chapter talking about is who it is that has the real power. You know, in verses 3 through 5, he talks about the process or the procedure that people will go through to create an idol to worship. He says, for the customs of the peoples are futile. For one cuts a tree from the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with the axe. They decorate it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and hammers so that it will not topple. They are upright like a palm tree, and they cannot speak. They must be carried because they cannot go by themselves. Do not be afraid of them, for they cannot do evil, nor can they do any good. Here, Jeremiah talks about how that the idols that the people from the nations around and the people of Judah are worshiping, they're made with their own hands. They can't walk on their own. They can't talk on their own. They can't act on their own. They can't even stand on their own. They have absolutely no power whatsoever except within the mind of the individual that built them. Meanwhile, there is a God that does have power. There is a God that can act. And in verse 6 he says, Inasmuch as there is none like you, O Lord, who would not fear you, O King of the nations? And yet, the people of Judah did not fear him the way that they should. The majority of the chapter is going to be spent analyzing the power of God and the things that God can do and making the point over and over again that God is the only one who has the ability to do what God is supposed to do, that there is no man-made creation that can act in such a way or that can do that kind of thing. He is God. There is none other beside him. As you drop down to the latter section, beginning in verse number 17 of the chapter, you begin to see Jeremiah's concluding thoughts concerning not just this message, but the entire message in chapters 7 through 10. And you come to verse 21. And one of the things that I found, or, or a couple of things that I wanted to point out here in the latter sections of Jeremiah's conclusion to this message. In verse 21, he says, For the shepherds have become dull-hearted. They have not sought the Lord. Therefore, they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Here, Jeremiah says that the shepherds have not sought the Lord. They have become, as he calls it, dull-hearted. They, uh, they have not had their hearts focused upon God. They have become calloused to God. He says the result is going to be that their flocks shall be scattered and they shall not prosper because they're going to look in other directions or they're not going to have the confidence that God is actually going to be there for them, so they're not even going to bother with asking him. It's very easy for us to become dull-hearted when bad things have happened, or when things do not go according to plan, or simply when we cannot see any longer that God is having any impact in our lives because of the choices that we are making. It's very possible for us to become like the shepherds of Judah. And for us to become dull-hearted and to no longer seek the Lord. We've got to work to ensure that that doesn't happen. The other thing I wanted to point out was in verse 23. When, then this is probably the most well-known verse in Jeremiah chapter 10. But in verse 23, Jeremiah says, O Lord, 
I know the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. In other words, man is not smart enough to figure it out on his own. Man is not capable of doing it all by himself. Now, intuitively, man understands this because there has always been the desire of man going all the way back in history. There has always been the recognition that man needed something outside of himself. Hence the reason for uh, God and hence the reason for for many nations that had already turned their backs on God or whose forefathers had refused to follow God, the creation of their own gods. Because they recognized man in and of himself was insufficient. We live in a time right now where more and more people do not believe that man is insufficient. And they have created a new God. And that God is themselves. But Jeremiah makes the point that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. And that is absolutely true when you begin to examine what is found in man and what surrounds man. These are some of the thoughts that I've had from Jeremiah chapter 10, some of the lessons that I've seen from the chapter. I hope that they're beneficial to you. Tomorrow we will come back and we will examine chapter 11. But until then, have a great day.